In today's video, we are going to see why we add excess of H2SO4 solution while preparing stock solution of copper sulfate. Now what is a stock solution? Stock solution means the solution which is prepared in bulk. Now while preparing some of the solutions in advance or in bulk, we add certain substances like H2SO4 in case of copper sulfate so can we can make the solution clear. In, obtain, in order to obtain the clarity, we will be adding excess of H2SO4. Now why we add this? For that, let us first understand what type of salt is copper sulfate. According to the things, what I have given in the previous videos, what we will do is, we will split this in this way. So I will get copper hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Means it is a salt of strong acid and weak base. So what do you think will be the pH of the solution here? pH of the solution will be below 7. Right? Because it is a strong acid. So the pH of the solution will be below 7 and so I will be adding excess of H2SO4. Second hint what you have to remember is that if I see the acid here, this is H2SO4 and so I will be adding H2SO4. Let us see now how the splitting takes place and what actually happens when copper sulfate solution is prepared. So let us first split copper sulfate. So copper sulfate, I will be taking the concept of Arrhenius here. When it is added to water, you will get copper hydroxide and H2SO4. Now according to the ionic concept given by Arrhenius, what is that ionic concept? You can refer to the previous videos. Being a salt, it will dissociate to give me Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus. Water always remains as it is being a weak electrolyte. This copper hydroxide is a weak base and so it will remain as it is. It will not undergo any dissociation. H2SO4 being a strong acid, it will give me 2H plus and SO4 2 minus. Now if you see this copper hydroxide, this forms a turbid solution. Means what student? Copper hydroxide is not soluble in water and so it forms or it gives rather turbidity to the solution. So we have to overcome this turbidity and because of that we are adding H2SO4. Now the question is how that H2SO4 works? For that if I see it, the equilibrium constant for this, so K is equal to by applying law of mass action what I will get is H plus here square after cancelling the common ions. So if I cancel the common ions, this and this ion will get cancelled and then I am applying the law of mass action here. So what I will get is Cu2 plus and H2O. Water is in bulk. So I am just keeping the equation in this, this format. Now let us see when I will add H2SO4 what will happen. When you add H2SO4, this is a strong acid. A strong electrolyte, so it will give me 2H plus and SO4 to minus ions. Now, as soon as I add H2SO4 to the solution, what is happening? 2H plus ions, they are released. When those ions are released, what will happen, student? This concentration will increase in the solution. When this concentration will increase, if I see this particular expression, this concentration will also increase. And when this will increase, the equilibrium constant will also increase or will get disturbed. But according to the concept, equilibrium constant is a characteristic for any reaction. And therefore, in order to re-establish this, what should happen is, this concentration should either decrease or this should decrease. Decrease in H plus ion is not possible because this will dissociate continuously as you have added this in excess. So what will decrease is co copper hydroxide. So when I say this will decrease means what will happen? This will start decomposing and it will give back you the copper ions. Means what students? Copper ions, they remain dissolved in water and the turbidity slowly disappears. So this is the reason why we are adding excess of H2SO4 while preparing the stock solution of copper sulfate. 
same question can be asked that why we add excess of HCl solution while preparing the stock solution of FeCl3 that is ferric chloride. So the reasoning there is same. Let us explain that again on the same basis. I will give that in brief because as you have understood this excess of HCl while preparing the solution of FeCl3. Now what type of salt is FeCl3? So I will add OH to this side and H to this side. So I will get FeOH thrice and HCl. So HCl is a strong acid. pH will be less than 7 and I am adding an acid there. Which acid to be added? I will be adding HCl here. So what I will get student when I add this FeCl3 to water. What I will get is FeOH thrice plus 3H plus plus 3Cl minus. This physical states all will be aqueous here. Now if I see the common ice, this is a salt. This is water, it will remain as it is. Now this is what is turbid. This will be ionic and ionic. So this what you will get here first is HCl. So I am forming the ions here also. I will get Fe3 plus aqueous, 3Cl minus plus H2O gives FeOH thrice. This is turbid plus 3H plus aqueous. 3Cl minus aqueous. Let us cancel the common ions now. Common ions what will get cancelled here is this. So you have this in the form of turbid form. You have to overcome this. So what you will be having here K is equal to active mass of FeOH thrice. In this way what else you will have here is H plus ions and you will have Fe2 3 plus and water. Now what you will add is, you will add HCl. HCl being a strong acid, it will give you H plus and Cl minus. So what will happen in the solution? In the solution, H plus ion concentration will increase. If this increases, means what student? This increases, means this increases. When this will increase, it will disturb the equilibrium constant. In order to maintain or re-establish this, what should happen? This should decrease. How this will decrease? This will start decomposing to give you Fe3 plus and thus Fe3 plus remains in the dissolved form and thus we overcome the turbidity. So this is the reason why we add H2SO4 during the preparation of stock solution copper sulfate or HCl while preparing the stock solution of ferric hydroxide. Thank you students.